Hi everyone, it's Rax, bringing you my very first build guide ever for Last Epoch. This build is absolutely insane, super godly at everything, one of the most fun builds can take you through absolutely all content in the game. This is the Wraith Lord Necromancer. You might have already heard about it, but I've played almost everything in the game, not quite everything, but I've played just about everything, and this build plows like no other. And I'll show you some gameplay here in a second. But you want to know something super cool about this build? Do you know who enabled this build to even be possible? David Harbour. Do you know who this super famous godly actor is? Well, he's the guy from Stranger Things and a million other things. So we have David Harbour to thank for putting the godly unique in the game that even makes this build work. And uh, I, I think you've got to try this. I'm going to show you some gameplay here, and you're probably not going to believe what you're going to see. So let's look at the unique here. Wraith Lord's Harbor. See the connection there? Let's look at uh, the third one from the bottom. Casting Summon Wraith instead summons a Wraith Lord. The Wraith Lord scales with your Summon Wraith tree and summons other Wraiths for you while you're in combat. While you're at maximum Wraiths, the Wraith Lord casts necrotic beams and consumes all of your non Wraith minions to empower itself. It gains temporary maximum health equal to 10% of their health and 10 spell damage for 10 seconds. Okay, so what does all of that mean? The, my style of build guide is take all the words and make it simple. There's going to be a gigantic Wraith Lord that's going to gobble everything that we summon and make itself stronger. And it's going to kill everything in the game for us very, very easily. Now, the ways to scale this build are the same ways that you would scale Wraith. And obviously, that's within the Wraith tree, so ranks to Wraith are very good. And you're going to want to stack Intelligence. You're going to want to stack anything with Minion and Minion Necrotic Damage or necrotic Minion Necrotic Pen. And we want Minion Spell Damage. The Wraith Lord does spell damage. We don't give a French toast about any of the other minions. It's all about the Wraith Lord. So we have the Summon Wraith here, and we maneuver through the tree. I could go through every node and tell you what it does. It's just everything to buff Wraiths. There's going to be something very cute that's going to enable us to always crit. That's why it is imperative that we go down all the way down here to these nodes to give us critical multipliers. If we are if we always crit and we have high critical multiplier, it's going to absolutely dominate. We're also going to go over here and pick up the damage and the health. Everything here is just very logically picked just to do more damage with Wraith. Now, the way that we always crit is from this buff Dreadshade. So this buff is going to make our Wraiths always quit crit from Egoism down here. That's why we path down here. And we are going to apply this buff to our Wraith. And we're going to have to refresh it, and we're going to have to pay attention to it. I will show you a trick on how to do that, because it's not the easiest thing in the world. But once every, whatever, 18 seconds or so when the cooldown is up, we're going to make sure that we reapply it, so our Wraith, is, our wraith Lord is just dominating everything. Summon Volatile Zombie is just for one purpose. We're going to bring them up, and they're going to get gobbled by the Wraith Lord to make him stronger. So up here. We are going to get more zombies for ca per cast. That means that the Wraith Lord is gobbling more zombies. And then Corpse Parasites on Zombie Death. He gobbles the zombies. Parasites spawn. The Wraith Lord gobbles that as well. The more gobbling happening, you can hit in the millions with this build. It's ridiculous. Infernal Shade is a buff that we are going to put on the Wraith Lord. And with this passive, it's going to have unlimited duration, or this skill point. I'm going to put it on, it buffs him, he's going to be a fire boy, it's very nice. Now, the Summon Skeletal Mage, the only reason why I have this on my bar is because uh, of this, Grave Passage. When you directly cast Summon Skeletal Mage, you're teleported to that location, so it's, it's a teleport, and then this is going to bring your minions with you. There is an experimental affix in the game that you can get that would solve all of this for you. And when you have that, instead you would spec uh, Transplant, which is an actual movement skill. 
you would spec transplant at that point, but I don't have it yet. I, I really am not far into this character, so I'm playing Scaly Mage. Another thing that I absolutely want to give credit to is when I started playing, people pointed me to a great content creator who you probably already know, Rise Cutie. Let me pause that for a second. Then let me show you, he has this beautiful guide in insane depth, actually. 100k views already, that's incredible. 100k views. So if you want to learn the super in-depth stuff about it, I followed this build guide as I was going through. So I'll have the link for you down in the description. This build is not yet on Maxwell. That might be one of your questions. I'm sure it's coming, though. My build is very similar to Rise's. I made a few changes, but let me show you what I have so far. Again, um, I'm level 91. I actually, believe it or not, I didn't make this character too long ago. I'm still working on everything. But let me show you again the basic idea with the gear. So you have a few options here. There is an exalted weapon, I believe, called a Soul Harvester. It's a very good base. Uh, you can just use an exalted soul harvester. It's a very good minion base. That's a great weapon. This reach of the grave, you probably you might have this in your stash, um, and it just gives minion spells one hundred and thirteen percent increased damage. It's only required level five, so you might have this. You can just slap this on. Another super godly thing is chronostasis, and this is very good for surviving. Don't worry about the top thing. It says it's consuming our ward. No, it's not. We don't have any melee skills. We're only taking it for the ward per second and the intelligence. Remember, intelligence scales our damage. This is what a lot of people use in the end game to stay alive because it's going to give you a lot of ward. I have 7.2k ward. I slap this one on. You're going to see my ward is probably going to go up about 1,000. I don't even have anything slammed into it. On the topic of ward, by the way, Ward is kind of a barrier over your life. It's super strong right now. Um, a lot of people are saying that it's going to be nerfed either mid-season or next season. It's possible, but Ward is the way to go right now. So what you do is you're looking for items that will drain your life and will buff your Ward. And then you look for all these different ways to generate Ward and um, uh, solve your Ward decay with Ward retention. Everything for Ward retention and gaining Ward. You can see, oh, I don't have any health, I only have 100 health, but I have a 7,000 shield. How many of you have 7,000 health? Probably almost none of you. That's why ward is so strong. Remember, I just made this character. I will get much more ward very soon. And again, if you actually use this weapon when you're pushing, you can get a lot more. That's where this armor comes from. A lot of builds are using this. Exsanguinous drains your health, gives you health as ward. Same thing with the boots. Drains your health, gives you health as ward, okay? So Exsanguinous and Last Steps are what are causing me to have this kind of massive shield. You'll see in the talent in the Passive Trees in a second that that's what we're going for as well. Then everything else is very simple. Keep the same things in your mind. Int, minion spell damage, minion necrotic damage, anything like that. That's exactly what we're looking for. Nothing else. So for example, if it says necrotic damage, that's not it. It must be minion necrotic damage because our Wraith Lord does all of our damage. Death Rattle is very nice because it has minion critical strike multiplier. Remember, they always crit from the buff that we apply to our Wraith Lord. And it's got intelligence on it. And I was lucky enough to slam 125 health in it. And it has a very good minion implicit. Minion damage, minion critical strike chance, that doesn't help us because we already always crit, but minion damage is good. Uh, for the offhand, minion damage, minion health, resistances to stay alive. I'm looking for a better offhand, but this is the best that I've got so far. Critical strike, this is just all for survivability. The int helps us here. Health, minion damage, int. Look at the implicit. Increased necrotic damage does nothing for us increased minion necrotic damage that's beautiful another exalted thing the health and the hybrid health are just to stay alive the minion damage is beautiful increased damage over time does nothing i need better gloves and then the turquoise ring is a godly base it's got minion damage and minion health and minion crit multiplier that's the dream int minion damage elemental res and health that's that's a beautiful ring right now Look at how OP this is. 
minion damage, health, health to stay alive. Summon three volatile zombies on potion use. So you want to know what you do? You buff up your minion right before a boss. You chug a million potions. Bye-bye. You can hit for like 10 million damage in one hit. Not kidding. 10 million damage. Boom. Gone. And the last thing I did not explain are the passives. The passives follow the exact same logic. Int. Damage for minions. Ward. Always the same story. Health, minion, damage, minion, damage, ward, int. Always the same story. So you'll start in the Acolyte tree. Int. Beautiful. We go up here for ward retention and the resistances. Okay. Put almost all of your points into the Necromancer. Everything here, very simple. Minion damage, ward, int. Health. Same thing. Get all the way down here. Look at that. 70% minion critical multiplier. Godly. There's a couple of points you can play around here with. Again, I'll show you Rise's build. I might also link another build until the max roll guide is up. There's a couple, couple ways to build this. One thing you can do with the remainder of your points, again, I have a lot more to get, is with the Lich, you can go for these nodes. Int, and then this is going to give you massive ward retention. Ward retention and building ward is godly. So might max this tree or up to this point right here with these two nodes. You can also go into the Warlock tree, and you can start to pick up this for intelligence, and there is this ward node as well, which is strong. So you could go for that as well. Then from here, when you have additional points, you're probably going to pump this up. More resistances and more minion necrotic damage. Very, very strong. That's the basis. That's the basics of the passives. All right, well, now let's have some fun. So again, I made this, I'm not too far. I am in the Empowered Monolith. Let's pick, uh, uh, let's pick anything. Let's go to the Age of Winter. That's totally fine. I can't wait to show this to you. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. But I want to show you a trick to this as well. All right. So the basic idea here is we want to get our minions up. Then we want to keep chain summoning volatile zombies so our wraith lord can gobble them our infernal shade is going to be up forever and we want to recast our dread shade whenever it falls off so this is an important piece so pay attention this is going to really help you if you make this build so let's go here into this echo i'll show you one where i explain it slowly and then i'll show you one really fast okay so let's get our Wraith Lord up. There he is. First thing you're going to do, give him Infernal Shade. Mouse over him. Boom. See that little fire aura under him? He's going to have it forever. Then cast your Dread Shade. You will see the buff here. Don't look here. Look here. And it's going to kill him. So let's move forward. And as he attacks, he's going to always crit. And we're going to right click to summon Volatile Zombies. And that's pretty much it. Summon a zombie, he gobbles them, and he's hitting everything for a bajillion damage, okay? Moving forward here, and you can see he effortlessly destroys everything. It's auto-aim. Something if you did not know this about minion builds, if you press A over a target, it will target them with your minions. So if you're in a big fight and you want to attack the big guy, then you're going to press A over them. Now, pay attention right here. I know the buff fell off because I'm looking here. I'm looking here. So you need to get him away from your minions. Let him start fighting. Mouse over him and recast Dread Shade. You, see, you can see it right there. And now he will always crit again. Okay? Now he's going to be doing crazy damage, whereas before he wasn't. So we summon the zombie, he gobbles them, and everything is guaranteed to die. Remember, I have Skelly Mages. Their only purpose is to teleport me right now because I don't have the right, um, I don't have the right experimental affix on my boots yet. But if I did that, I'd switch it for transplant. And you can just literally run in a circle. He'll kill everything. I'm looking right here for this buff. The moment that it fades, we're going to reapply it. Don't reapply it yet. Wait. It fell off. Target him. Recast it. And he's going to absolutely destroy everything. 
Easy. That's it. That's the entire build. You don't ever have to resummon wraiths. Don't ever have to press that button. Another hint when you're doing this is there seems to be a bug where if you cast Dread Shade on your Wraith immediately, it won't work. So he already has it on him, luckily. You have two choices. You could either resummon your Wraith at the start of every Echo, but that's annoying. I wouldn't recommend that. Or just run for a moment. Let him play for 10 seconds and then cast Dread Shade on him and it'll be fine. Doesn't need to be 10 seconds, by the way. It can be like six. The buff is off. I see it's off. Target him, recast it. Just mouse over him, and I'm pressing my one button. That's it. Just run. Run and summon zombies. Remember how on my belt, I have potions give volatile zombies? So when we get into a big fight, I can chug all six of my potions real quick, and his power level from gobbling them is out of this world. Okay? But as long as he's got his buff right here, we should be fine. The echo is already over. It was a complete demolition derby. This build against bosses, I wish I had a boss up to show you. He's killing the empowered monolith bosses in five seconds. Just boom, just vaporizing them. So this build is absolutely godly. That's pretty much it. My idols here are just for health and resistances. When my resistances are totally fine without my idols, I'm just going to go for health. Health, health, health. If you can get ward retention on them, that's fine, but just massive amounts of health will work after these are converting your health to ward. You can see I've got 8,000 here, and uh, it's absolutely no problem. I'd do way more damage, by the way, if I had this uh, wand on. Let's, let's do one more real quick for the road. I'll try to do this one real fast. All right. Um, and, okay, I'm glad this happened. If, if your, the buffs that you give your Wraith Lord kill your Wraith Lord over time. So if you don't play for a while, when you start the thing, he's going to be dead. Then you'll have to resummon him. Okay, give him the fire buff, give him the big buff, and here we go. Real fast. Here we go, as fast as we can. Let's go straight to the end, and you're going to see him chop everything. When we get into a big fight here, I'm going to drink all my potions. Okay, and he's going to zap everything. Press A over the big guy, instant death. There we go over here, some of those zombies, he gobbles them. Go over here. Again, I'm 100% sure that uh, someone on Maxwell has got to be working on this build. You see how we're critting for 100,000 right there? No problem. The Echo's already over. You can see he still has the buff on him. No problem. And we're out. That's it. So, David Harbour. What a beautiful idea for the unique. Love to see him getting involved in ARPGs. This build absolutely destroys, destroys the game. I know some people that are 1,300 corruption with this build. So it's real fun to go in there and try to slam all the necrotic minion stuff and the int on all these pieces, and then the sky's the limit. Anyway, Rise has a much more expansive build or video. I think it's an hour long. If you want to watch that, I'll link that. We will have a planner soon. I'll link, uh, I'll let you grab the planner from Rise. There's also another planner that I might attach as well. Someone built it slightly differently. Um, but that's it, guys. Let me know if you like the style of build guide. I haven't made a build guide for Last Epoch yet. But essentially, I don't have the opinion that I need to go through every single node and read to you what every node does. Int, ward, minion necrotic, crush everything. Minion spell damage, by the way, not melee damage, not, mo not bow damage. Minion spell damage is what the Wraith Lord does. Put on the two buffs. Track the Dread Shade buff right here. Don't cast it right away in an echo. Walk a little bit. Let him, like, hit something. Then cast it. That's a big problem. I'm sure it's a bug. They'll fix it later. And that's pretty much it. Hope you have a great time with this one, guys. And if you liked it, I'll make many more build guides in the future. Thank you.